She married into it, of course. <laughs> of and course. She was waiting for me to pick her up. I'm, I'm working late on fence jobs, and she's waiting for me to come and pick her up for our date. That was your introduction to the fence life. Uh-huh, it was. And so, then I helped him start Baker Fence later down the road. What is up, fence fam? Joe Everest, your fence expert. We just wrapped up an incredible conversation with Baker's Fence, and I think the key takeaway for me at least was choosing when and if to scale, because a lot of times the answer is maybe not scaling too quickly or scaling at all. Finding the sweet spot for your business. For that key takeaway and a few others, let's get into Baker Fence's fence story. All right, guys, for the fence fam out there that maybe haven't met you guys, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Barry Baker. This is my wife, Christine Baker, and we are Baker Fence Company in Hayesville, Kansas, which is just outside Wichita. Very good. Very good. How long have you guys been building fence? Baker Fence has been around 20 years this year. 20, 20 years this year? 20 years this year. <laughs> Big year. Yeah. Big year. I worked for another company for 18. Okay. And then I was okay. partial owner of another one for about three. So well, that sounds like an interesting story. Barry, would you guys mind sharing with me your guys' fence story? For me, it was, it's, well, for a lot of people, it's an accident, you know? <laughs> yes. I was 17 years old and uh, we had moved out into the county, Sedgwick County, to be close to one of my mom's best friends. And we had built our house, me and my dad built our house, starting when I was about 15. And we wrapped that up and the neighbor came through, my mom's buddy, and said, would you help us build ours? So we did that and got done and, and uh, her husband was the superintendent of a fence company. Okay. And so he felt like he owed my dad a favor and uh, he gave me a job uh, when I was 17. So I got started in the fence business in 1979, 1979. in the summer of my junior year. Okay. And that was summer help for three years. I went to K-State for two years and then uh, ended up going just full time and I was there for several years. So what, so what brought you back to fence after college? I never, I, I worked through the summers okay. every summer, but the truth was is we, we got paid by the foot. All the, yeah. all the salesmen were 100% commission. All of the installers were by the foot and I could make more money than my buddies that were graduating yeah. right off the bat. Now, there's a longer term story to that probably in the end, but uh, the fence industry has been good to us. What, what has kept you guys with fence? What has kept you in the business? Because it's not, it's not all peaks, right? There are some valleys. Earlier, I was talking with someone about that you really have to enjoy it, right? But what, it, what about the industry keeps you guys in it through the lows, not just the highs? And that's a good question. The lows can get pretty low. You know, we, we're basically survivors of the Great Recession. And uh, and so, you know, you really have to want it to get through times like that. And, uh, but at a point, you know, you've been doing something long enough, you're proficient at it, you go try to do anything else. And there's all those other unknown barriers to get started into something else. But honestly, I never, I never thought about leaving. Sure. It was just a summer job, but it turned into a career really. And so uh, just, you, like I said, you get good at something, people appreciate your work, and that's enough motivation for me. She married into it, of course. <laughs> of and course. She was waiting for me to pick her up. I'm, I'm working late on fence jobs, and she's waiting for me to come and pick her up for our date. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That was your introduction to the fence life. Uh-huh, it was. And <laughs> so, then I helped him start Baker Fence later down the road. So that's what I want to talk about next. So what, what made you guys decide you know what, we could do this on our own. Like what, we're, it would, it's a better idea to do it on our own than to do it for someone else. What, what was that moment? Well, I was with a fairly large company and, and they're a great company, yeah. don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, but there's that corporate structure yeah. and uh, sometimes there's conflicting ideas, you know, yeah. and uh, just being able to feel after, because you feel like after 20 years or so, you kind of know what you're doing. Sure. And sure. Uh, if if I I got tired of saying, well, if I owned the place, I'd do it this way, this way, this way. And so she said, well, That's why good. don't you yeah. own the place? Yeah, so, she says, quit saying it. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. What what was that like? What what did year one look like for well, Baker Fence? Well, the first time we had a partner, 
and we got along real good. We're still friends and we still collaborate today. But having two guys kind of at the top when you're getting started uh, is, is tough. Sure. And uh, we caught the tail end of the 90s, which was really great. Mm -hmm. And then about 2000, early 2000s, 2003, uh -huh. things started to downtick a little bit. Sure. And so uh, I peeled off on my own. He bought me out and then we started our Baker. Own. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Baker Fence was born. Right. Mm -hmm. So what did that look like? So the first year you guys out on your own and you've had some experience, obviously, quite a bit of experience, obviously, and even having experience with your own company with a partner. What did that first year, though, like with you guys when it was just you two, what did that year look like? Well, that year we had we had just built a house we'd had our kid and okay. we're starting a business kind of all at the same time <laughs> big year she was tied down <laughs> at the house and so i went out and i tried to i tried to be super sub i wanted to go around okay. and be subcontract for everybody else yeah and i'd land at a place and i'd run them out of work and i'd go to another place and run them out of work and so just not having the stability then sort of very quickly we had to make plans so that we could go get our uh, our own work. Right, we yeah. started to put out some advertising in that. Okay, okay. And, and slowly and surely, we had some jobs trickle in, and then just from getting our work up and people seeing our signs, sure. other other people began to call and and just and, kind of the word of the mouth, word of mouth yeah. took mm -hmm. over from there. That mm -hmm. first year when I left, when my partner bought me out, I didn't even have a fence truck, and so you know that'd been the first time in forever. So we kind of had to start, start it over. over. Sure. You know, we cashed in an insurance policy so I could buy me a nice big truck. And yeah. in those days, a lot of people ran two tons. I got a two okay. ton, 24 yeah. foot bed. And, and uh -huh. we were we went to work. And sure. uh, so just haven't been in it for as long as I had been, you know, a lot of contact. So we really, sure. we were up and running pretty quick. How, how does Baker Fence look different now than it did 20 years ago? That's our big, <laughs> we wished it looked more different. <laughs> but um, people kind of settle into what they do best. Sure. And I sure. knew early on that I didn't want a humongous fence company yeah. and have branches. I kind of lived in that world for a while. Yeah, you'd experienced that already. And I, I wanted to keep it mom and pop. Sure. And so then as the kids got older, the pressure on her to step in more and more and yeah. so now um she does probably 80 okay of the estimating okay. for in residential yeah and uh so but it's long hours you know to get something going the first 10 yeah. years are pretty tough and uh but i've got two kids going to wichita state now and there they're both they're they're on the back end of that so a few more years of that but there you go it's been good to us yes absolutely so what kind of fence did you guys start out with? So you started out subbing and then going out on your own or for yourself. But what type of fence did you guys specialize in then? Well, we did we did anything. Sure. Okay. And uh, but primarily residential, you okay. know, wood, ornamental oh. iron, mm -hmm. yep. chain link even back then. Yeah. And then we'd try to buy it off some nice commercial jobs about every quarter, get a nice big one. Yeah. And uh, we landed a few nice size ones. and. Yeah. They'll be there long after I'm gone. <laughs> Very good. Does it does it look different now as far as the what you guys find yourselves installing more or less than the other? Of course, the big turn several years ago is the you know chain link to more ornamental iron. Lots yep. of neighborhoods. Yeah. A lot more restrictions. I still think chain link's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, but you know, with the surroundings we've got yeah. here, yeah. you know, uh, it's, it's mostly it's, wood and ornamental iron. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Have you guys seen it cycle? And I ask that because I think now I've only been in it 20 years altogether, but I feel like I've seen it cycle back and forth from at least in our market from a you're right from a, a chain link to an ornamental. But we seem to keep going back and forth from like wood to vinyl, uh, vinyl to wood, ornamental sprinkled in. Have you guys seen anything like that up in your guys's area? Not so much. The, the okay. vinyl sort of got really an unfair bad name through some of the big box stores yeah and with the yeah. the, the cheaper that weren't what i'd call contractor grade fair um yeah so we'll have we'll have runs of vinyl occasionally um and i think honestly if i committed to really showing vinyl on every wood privacy fence i'd probably i could probably change our market sure i think that's true 
Well, I mean, because the lower maintenance aspect of yeah. it is really the key to it. Yeah. Uh, and you're right in that uh, lower grade materials kind of ruin our industry for it as well. And it, it's hard to get away from that. Once you start, once you have enough people have that experience, it kind of ruins the market for it for a while because no one wants to be the first one to try it again, it seems yeah. like. Let me switch gears a little bit and talk about, so your guys' wide experience if you were to try to give so someone that's watching that is either just starting out or maybe thinking about starting out what advice whether it, and it could be a couple because i think that's very common if you could give that couple advice what would it be well we had some quite a bit of experience before sure so we knew kind of what we were getting into but the connections that you need to kind of make the relationships that you need to build uh with all the social media and everything, when it's all said and done, it's still about the people that you work with and the, the relationship, especially with the wholesalers and distributors and manufacturers. And uh, I never participated in the AFA at all before, uh, but as soon as we went on our own, never been to a convention and we, we started hitting those. And so really being involved with the AFA was really great for us. and people that I've known that just step into the business cold, it's a great, great start. So getting, being able to meet people and find out what's available, fast track is definitely through being a member of the AFA. Well, let's talk about your, the longevity in the business. If you could pick out maybe the top three reasons that have made you guys successful in the industry, what would you say the top three things would be? necessity you got to feed your kids <laughs> um well i think we've stayed true to our quality right the quality is bit i we do have and i'm not just saying that everybody says that but part of the reason why we don't grow uh to be a big fence company is because i want that control yeah and mm -hmm. so being on i'm still on every job at some point sure uh to bring it home for sure and then just really planning. Uh, I'd like to throw one fourth thing in there. Finding sure, something that's a little bit different okay. than what other people do. I, I, uh, we were bringing steel posts on wood fences, you know, 20 years ago, and uh, now everybody does it. Of course, yeah. And so when you look back at the end of, of a of a time and you can see that you've nudged your area and your market a little bit, that feels pretty good. So, but having good the best material that we can get, whatever is available. I think you hit the nail on the head with the relationships. I think above and beyond anything else, I think the, the, the guys and gals that do it really right figure that out quickly, that it's about relationships. Whether it's with other contractors in your area, you know, some people would call them competitors, or vendors and suppliers, or with the clients is very very much a relationship driven business guys i appreciate your time i promise to keep this short and sweet and i hope we've held up to that